uh, we'll start off with question number 11 now uh, three infinitely long parallel wires a b and c are separated by a distance d and lying in the plane of the paper with each of them carrying a current i uh, find the locus of points on the plane for which the magnetic field is zero so we have three infinitely long parallel wires carrying a current in the same direction and this seems like a pretty easy question where yes. we just have to find the point at which the magnetic field uh, becomes zero Uh, this is a pretty easy question uh, just we have to analyze that where we have to look for the particular points okay so that uh, so we start with our analyzing so we see that uh, these are all carrying the current in the same direction okay. all right so if we look for a point out here okay like, uh, in this part of the plane right which is away from this wire we we'll see that the current because of this will be into the plane because of this also it will be into the plane and because of this also it will be into the plane okay the field right yeah the, okay yeah sorry the magnetic field will be right. into the plane okay and if we look out here the magnetic field will be out of the plane for all three of them right uh so basically it cannot be zero out here or here somewhere okay so we have two different regions outside lying outside yeah. the boundaries of the plane uh wires where uh, on one side the summation adds up to the field uh, into the plane and one side it adds up to a field out, uh, outside the plane so oh, yes. basically the uh, chances of uh, finding the points where it becomes zero has to lie between these two wires like the boundary yes. wires uh, so for that purpose and like even if we find like even if we have to tell the locus of the points so what we see that uh, at any distance x say any distance say if here if for this distance the basically the magnetic field becomes zero then right. it happens for every point lying above this okay basically this locus would be a line right somewhere around here let's consider this at a distance x okay okay So now we start with our calculation. Say wire one, wire two, and this was our wire three. Right. See, uh, when we start with this, because of wire one, the magnetic field will be into the plane. Okay. Because of wire two, two it will be into the plane. Right. Because of wire three, it will be out of the plane. Okay. Uh, so we represent it by an equation. So say mu naught i by 2 pi d plus x. This is due to wire one. This is due to wire one. Right. Plus mu naught i divided by 2 pi x. This will be equal to the magnetic field which is going up. Okay. Mu naught i by 2 pi. D minus x. Right. This is because of wire three. Right. So this was our wire one. This is due to wire two. These are in the same direction, so right. they add up, and this is in the opposite direction. Wire three. Now we just solve the equation. See, right. mu naught i by two pi will get cancelled. Right. Uh, we'll have the equation as one divided by d plus x. All right. Plus one divided by x equals one divided by d minus x. So basically, we solve that equation: two x plus d whole into d minus x equals x into x plus d. So this comes out to be minus two x square plus d x plus d square equals x square plus d x. Uh, d x gets cancelled. Right. Two uh, x we send there, so it comes out basically d square equals three x square. Right. X equals plus minus d by root three. Okay. So see, by using this x, we used x at a dis uh, distance from the wire wire two. Right. 
so one gives us positive value d by root 3 which right. indicates the uh, basically the locus of points here okay and the other one uh, which is minus d by root 3 right. it gives the value of points here right right so by this basically we get both the points through our quadratic equations for okay. which uh, the magnetic field will be zero okay now suppose we have some another question like this in which there are four wires right say one two three four so basically here if we check for it uh, we won't find it because they will be in the same direction into the plane the magnetic field right here the magnetic field will be the out of the plane so for this we have to find basically for here for here and for here for all the three places right and here we'll get a cubic equation okay and basically we can solve it to get all the three values right so this was question number 11 this we teen wire diye gaye hain aur hame aise jis jin mein current i carry kiya ja raha hai aur aise points ke locus ko pata karna hai jahan pe magnetic field zero ho so since the three wires are carrying the current in the same direction by superposition principle uh, when we look at the region outside the boundary of the outer two wires uh, the summation of the fields over there won't add up to zero because yes. on one side uh, the, the net magnetic field goes into the people and like on the other side the net magnetic field comes out of the people the plane which is the plane so we solve this by the formula uh, for the magnetic field on account of a wire infinitely long current carrying wire which is mu naught i by 2 pi d which is where d is the distance on over here we take the two regions between the wire 1 and wire 2 and wire 2 and wire 3 and this formula lagate hain and by this we get a quadratic equation uh, d square is equal to 3x square so Solving this, we get the value x is equal to plus minus d by square root of 3, which gives us uh, the locus of a straight line, right? Yes. Right. So, there are two uh, straight lines, one on the right side of wire 2 and one on the other side of wire 2 uh, at a distance of d by root 3, where the net magnetic field due to the three wires becomes zero. So, that is question number 11. Now we'll move on to question number 12. A rectangular coil carrying, carrying current I lies in the XY plane. Its mass is M. A magnetic field of B is equal to B0 bracket 3I plus 4 K cap exists. Find the magnetic force on RS in terms of M. Here we have the gravity is present and its value is minus 9.8 K cap. So there is a rectangular coil and it has a current and we have given a magnetic field and we have to find the magnetic force on the element rs in the terms of the mass of the coil so can you tell us how do we approach uh, this question uh, yes basically in this question uh, see a current is there all right so because of the current uh, it will have some magnetic moment okay and as we know torque equals m cross b right so b is also there so it will have some torque Okay. And that torque will be balanced by the torque due to mg, which okay. is acting downwards. So, can you tell us what is the uh, effect that the mass of the coil is having here? Like, uh, Yes, the mass uh, basically acts so as to uh, compensate for the torque provided by the magnetic force. Had the mass not been there, right. or basically had it not been balanced, then there would have been a net resulting torque. Okay. And it would be rotating with increasing angular velocity. Right. So, we see that without the mass, the coil would have been in a rotating state instead of being in equilibrium, right? Yes. yes. All right. Uh, so, we start off with the question. Uh, first, we find the m vector, which is equals minus i a b. Right. Into k cap. Because this is in the clockwise direction and by the right hand rule if we curl our fingers around this and the thumb will point downwards Right The area is AB and the current is I Okay We find torque M cross B Which equals Minus I AB K cap Cross 3i cap plus 
फोर के कैप राइट सो दिस विल रिजल्ट इन के कॉफ आई वुड बी जे सो माइनस थ्री आई ए बी जे कैप ओके के क्रॉस के विल बी जीरो बिकॉज दे आर इन द सेम डायरेक्शन राइट सो साइन जीरो इक्वल जीरो राइट सो वी हैव नेट टॉक माइनस थ्री आई ए बी जे कैप यस नाउ लेट एस लुक एट द टॉक अबाउट द पी क्यू बिकॉज ऑफ द मास एम सो बिकॉज इट इज अ प्लेन और शीट एंड इज द सेंटर ऑफ मास सेंटर ऑफ मास विल लाई है बिटवीन एट अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ ए बाई टू so basically we find the torque because of the weight of the loop okay so the torque would be so you're talking about the gravitational torque on yeah. the coil right so the torque due to gravity would be r vector cross f vector where right. f is the force due to the gravity right right r vector is here so this is a by 2 i cap cross माइनस एम जी के कैप राइट विच कम्स आउट टू बी एम जी ए बाय टू जे कैप राइट नो सी दिस इज इन इक्वलिब्रियम एंड इफ एनी ऑब्जेक्ट इज इन इक्वलिब्रियम देन द नेट टॉक ऑफ दैट शुड बी जीरो ओके सो बेसिकली दीज आर द नेट टॉक्स We right. add them up, and that should amount to zero. Right. So basically, minus three i a b plus m g a by two should be equal to zero. Uh, right. Uh, this gives us i equals m g by six b. All right. Uh, we had just made a small mistake here. See okay. the B the magnetic. This is right. So the magnetic field was actually three i cap plus four j cap into B naught. Okay. Four k cap, right? Yes. Okay. Four uh, k cap into B naught. So we just forgot to multiply B naught. All right. Into B naught. Whole along. This was m g a by two. This would be minus. थ्री आई ए बी बी नॉट राइट सो आई कम दू बी एम जी बाई सिक्स बी होल इन टू बी नॉट बी नॉट ओके बेसिकली नाउ सी दिस इज द करेंट वी हैव ओके वी फाउंड द वैल्यू ऑफ करेंट राइट वी नो द वैल्यू ऑफ द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ओके सो वी जस्ट हैव टू फाइंड द फोर्स ऑन आर एस राइट सो इफ द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड वर्क वॉज कॉन्स्टेंट we had a formula f equals i into l cross b l vector cross b vector right okay so i is basically our mg by 6b b not now let's see what our l vector would be we have to okay. find for rs so our l vector would be minus bj cap Okay. Starting from R to S in this direction. Right. Basically, in minus J cap. So that comes out to be minus B J cap cross B vector is three I cap plus four K cap. Four K cap. P not. Right. Uh, let's just solve for it. Uh, see the constants B B not. Just cut them off from the start. Okay. It's M G by six. Uh, J cross I uh, would be minus K. Minus K. But because it was minus one. Right. Come plus K cap. Right. Plus J cross K is I. But because it was minus B. 
Right. Hence it becomes minus of four i cap. Right. Uh, also, before we move, we move on, uh, I should point out that this should be three k cap, right? Here. Uh, yes, exactly. All right. Because this constant was there, and right, we did right. not multiply that constant. Okay. So we just write it down properly. Mg by six. Three k cap minus four i cap. Right. This is the force that would be acting on R S. Right. So that was question number twelve. Uh, where we had to find the uh, net force acting on the element of this uh, uh, rectangular coil uh, R S in terms of m, and we're getting the answer as m g by six three k cap minus four i cap. So when we start off with this question, uh, one of the important things that should be noted is that the element and the coil in general has a mass. So this makes a lot of difference here, right? Yes. Okay. So because uh, were it not for the mass present, the the, the coil would have been uh, rotating. The coil would have been rotating with an increasing angular velocity because the torque was there. Basically. Right. And because of the presence of mass, there's a gravitational torque acting on the coil, and this is balancing out the the torque due to the magnetic field uh, or the magnetic force which is acting on the coil. Right. So we fi first find the magnetic torque, which is given by m cross b, and then we find the gravitational torque. And since the uh, element as a whole is in equilibrium, uh, the summation of both these torques should add up to zero. And from here we get the current flowing, which is which comes out to be m g by six b b naught, right? Yes. Okay. And using this current and the uh, field present, we calculate the force, which is given by the formula I into L cross B. And as a result, we finally get an answer, which comes out to be mg by six, three k cap minus four i cap. And we can just substitute the value of g to be nine point eight to get the numerical answer. Right. And okay. In terms of m, exactly. That's correct. So that was question number twelve for us. We start off with question number thirteen. Given the cross section of a current carrying wire with current density J, find the magnitude of magnetic field at a distance r naught from the center. So, we are given the current carrying uh, wire with its density J, and J is a function of r, which is given P plus rho. Uh, yeah, we will call that rho. Okay, uh, it's yeah. a rho. Right. So J as a function of distance R is rho plus three R square by two, where R is the distance from the center. All right. Okay. So can you tell us how do we go about solving this problem, please? Uh, yes. So basically, uh, the questions which we have considered, or the basically, if we see the current in a wire, we consider the current density to be constant. Right. Uh, but in this particular case, we are given a wire such that when it goes, uh, when we go away from the center, the current density or the amount of current it, it carries per unit area which uh, actually changes right uh, as a function of r so basically to find a particular current uh, say current between a radius of r to r plus dr uh, this is current in Area R to R plus dr. Right. Uh, the area would be two pi r dr, and this area we multiply by the j at r. Okay. Into j of r. Right. So this would give us the current passing through uh, that small strip of R to R plus dr. Right. Basically, this a small strip of it dr. Right. So, this uh, basically we now use a law we have known that is integral of b dot dl equals mu naught i. Okay. Uh, we use this to find the total. Uh, what do we say? The total magnetic field at a distance r naught. G. So for doing that, uh, let's find the total current till R naught. 
वी नो द करेंट द डी आई फॉर आर टू आर प्लस डी आर इज गिवेन बाय टू पाई आर डॉट डी आर डॉट जे ऑफ आर इज रो प्लस थ्री आर स्क्वायर बाय Now, if we integrate it from zero to R naught, it would give us the total current enclosed uh, in a radius of R naught. J. So let's do that. Uh, the limits of integration will be from zero to R naught. Okay. So this is zero to R naught. Two mm. pi R rho plus two cancel out three. Pi R cube and whole of this into dr. Right. Uh, we just substitute it. Uh, we get rho pi R naught square plus three pi R naught square by four. All right. Uh, so what is this? This is basically the current. The uh, current I. Uh, from zero to R naught. All right. Uh, now we have to apply integral b dot d l. Uh, now before this, uh, we might uh, come across a confusion. We might think that uh, okay, then why the magnetic field would be because the current density is varying. How can we say that the magnetic field uh, around a circle? In a particular circle would be of a constant magnitude. Right. So let's address that issue. Uh, we are given a function uh, whose dens uh, current density depends only on r. Okay. So there is no way to determine that if we travel it from this direction, then that r is different from this direction, then it is different or anything else. So basically, this is circular symmetry out here. So because of that, we can say. Uh, that yes, our magnetic field at a distance r will always remain same. Right. So integral b d l equals mu naught into i enclosed. So at a distance of uh, r naught, it would be b into two pi r naught equals mu naught rho pi r naught square. Plus three pi r naught is uh, just a second. This is r naught to the power four. Okay. Plus, uh, yeah. R to the power four. Right. R naught to the power four by four. So b comes out to be. Mu naught whole into rho r naught by two plus three r naught cube by eight. All right. So that was question number thirteen for us, uh, where we had to find. The Magnitude of the magnetic field at a distance r not from the center, and we were given the current density being carried by the current carrying wire. Uh, so, can you just tell us the generalized idea for this, like to go about solving this kind of problems in the uh, GE? Yes, the generalized formula is that uh, the generalized uh, concept basically is that. Uh, we apply the same formula integral BDL mu naught i. Okay. Uh, so this is important, right, for solving this kind uh, of. Yeah, this is the like approach. basic uh, formula which we apply. Right. And in finding i, we have to just integrate because the density is varying. So G. we just integrate for i from zero to r naught. G. We find how much i is enclosed in that uh, particular circle. Correct. And so b into a particular loop two by r naught. We just equate it to mu naught into i, and right. then find the way. Okay, so and we get the final answer for this as um, b is equal to mu naught or r naught by two plus three r naught cube by eight. So that was question number thirteen.